Okay, so I'm going to be building LXQT next and just booting up the PC going to be working on. Um, I'd have thought yesterday that at the end of the previous video I actually used a shutdown menu on the uh, light DM screen that wasn't working initially and it was working and I suppose that's clearly due to the fact that um, XFC4, one of the packages we ins installed there, must have enabled the functionality of that. And in fact, it's probably more likely one of the known packages because we've installed quite a few of the known packages. Um, if you remember that these four options here were all greyed out, they weren't enabled. Um, but the uh, previous session, I just clicked shut down and it all shut down the PC correctly. Another thing worth noting is the background looks like it's permanently fixed itself to the XFC4 background. Like I said, I'm sure Light DM used to have its own sort of bluish background, sort of cloudy looking background, but whether that's something that hadn't been configured correctly or something I'd missed or don't know what, um, it, it doesn't really matter. It's it's quite pleasant to look at, I guess. So. Um, I'm not quite sure how you change it though. I've never, never changed it. But I imagine being there's hardly any options here unless there's a hidden shortcut. I've got some extra options there now. Um, unless there's a hidden shortcut somewhere, I don't know. Um, you know, like a a keyboard shortcut maybe. I don't know how this gets changed. So. One thing I've got to do is to find out how to stop the screensaver and the uh, power settings from blanking the screen um, in case I don't touch the keyboard or mouse for more than a few minutes. So I'm just going to go to Preferences, Power Manager. Um, Right, display power management. I'll turn that off. So let's just stop the display going to sleep. And I better check to see if the screen. Oh, yes, the screensaver is one thing I haven't demonstrated. Um, where would that be? Right, X screen server settings, there it is there. So, um, let me just check the monitor settings. Right, yeah, there's nothing there to set. So, the preferences screen server settings. Yeah, X screen server is quite uh, an amazing package. Lots of unusual screen savers. You can see this one here, it looks like some sort of moonscape. Um, modern screen savers is very dull. In fact, they're barely used at all because of power saving. Um, but for having a screen saver that comes on even just for a few minutes before the monitor is powered off, it uh, can be quite interesting. As you can see this demo, or, or preview rather, of the one that's happened to have come up. It's quite interesting. And, and as you can see, there are, well, I don't know how many, but maybe up near 100 different screensavers on there which uh, each of themselves are quite interesting some are look a bit dated but that probably reflects their um, history um, and others like that uh, square square torus one look quite interesting yeah this looks like quite an ancient one it's just pure 2d pixels in fact it's oh yeah it's just appearing um, so yeah it's quite a interesting package to play around with you might find some favorites you might want to select to appear um, i'm not sure why some of these aren't defaulted it may be something to do with uh, the capabilities of the graphics adapter perhaps they're not gl capable and the default is set to only have open gl available screensavers um, but yeah there's certainly 
some quite interesting ones in there. Well, that one's reminiscent, obviously, of something like Wolfenstein, maybe the original Wolfenstein. Uh, and then the start button looks like the Windows 95 start button, I guess. So it gives an idea of its age. So it's quite an interesting one. So yeah, quite, quite good, and yeah, even I can't stop looking at it now. Um, so what I want to do is to try and stop the right power management is off. Um, I really want to stop this from uh, turning on. Let's do. Set, I think the settings. Yeah, the settings for each individual screensaver. So disable screensaver, that's what I want to do. So hopefully, um, if the screen is, or the keyboard and mouse are idle for a while, that these won't interrupt the view of the compile that's running. So let's get Falcon up again. Repositioning. You can see that I've been into a desktop environment where it's repositioned the window, one that's had a bar at the top, probably that XFCE probably, I would have thought. Um, so I want a terminal here, and I was using LX terminal, it's quite a nice one. And I want to get my spreadsheet up as well. Okay, and that's remembered its position as well, but it looks of it, so that's handy. So I'll just load up the file. Okay, so, well, uh, in fact, on the screen you can see the GNOME section. You can see um, probably about three quarters of it has actually been in installed. Like I say, a lot of these um, desktop environments and window managers we've installed so far do use parts of GNOME. So you can see there's not a lot left there. It's mainly the applications actually. So, so yeah, last session did LXDE. You can see that's all been installed, and XFCE, um, LXT, LXT, QT. Sorry, um, like I said, I'm not sure if I've ever installed this or not. It's one that I've never really paid attention to, but. Um, Apparently, the reason why LXDE is being removed because it's not updated anymore, and LXQT, which is a, a kind of a fork, but also like a merge of another desktop environment. So I don't know whether you call that a crop or something like the backwards of a fork. Um, it's like the replacement for LXDE, or it's intended to be the replacement. So I believe the main, the guy who designed LXDE, Mr. PC Man. Um, He's now moved on to this LXQT project from what I can understand. So this is the the new replacement for it and the modern replacement. And there seems to be a lot of work going on with this now. So uh, LXD will probably fall by the wayside eventually. So it looks like this doesn't actually share anything. Um, it looks like it's using its own libraries. So maybe that's the idea. And as you, as you can probably tell by the name, it's not using GNOME anymore. It's now using QT libraries. So I guess, um, I don't know for sure, but we'll find out when we come to build KDE. Either it's using the odd um, package from KDE or um, it's using its own and maybe some of these are used by KD. I'm not, I'm not sure, but the fact that it's got K frame, KD frameworks and Plasma and miscellaneous dependencies here, and for example, Solid I recognise as part of either K, the KF5 or Plasma. Um, I'm not sure what what quite what's going on there. So um, yeah, I did say that LXDE was known based, but I do remember we had to install some packages out of the K frameworks and I can't remember which package it was for now so 
whether it was for LXDE or something else, I'm not, I'm not sure now. But you can see that we had to build the KDE frameworks before we could carry on. In fact, I think it was for LXDE. So maybe, maybe LXDE was already um, KDE based or Plasma based. So let's go into LXQT and start going through these get some ideas again it's uh, another one of these desktop environments that's um, uses a minimal amount of CPU and, and RAM um, it says it's useful for cloud computers low hardware spec uh, or older computers but can be used in modern hardware um, and again it's built the core packages are in order presented in the book for easiest resolution and dependencies so it makes life a little easier for us so it seems like the basic the core is this first bit and then the desktop environment part the actual bit that makes it desktop environment as opposed to a window manager is this remaining section so it looks like we've got some setup to do so build the whole of the xorg chapter which we've done second the required parts of it qt the full package qt is quite long um, but there's an alternative which um, I presume is a cut down version. Finally, build the LXQT desktop using the pages below in order. The packages in the application section are optional, but as a minimum, QT terminal is recommended. So if we go back to the contents, it's basically setting, saying that everything in. Oh, sorry, this, this is probably part of the uh, main package but it's saying that everything here is optional I didn't see this section here except for part apart from uh, QT terminal uh, it's probably a requirement so as it states in the previous page I'm just going to go through each one of these in order pick up any straggling dependencies that may be needed from other parts of the book um, and just build it up from there so I imagine it's going to take maybe an hour or so to build given the number of packages as a bit of a wild guess I don't know how big they are but I can't think it's going to take a particular look particularly long time so let's go to the first package and we've got the dependencies for that so K window system for LXQT download it start building it so I'll change into sources BLFS and extract it so it looks like these are going to be CMake packages there's no additional information about adjusting the configuration So that's the first one. Install it and then remove some unneeded files as the root user. And we can move on to K Wayland for LXQT. So we download that. It looks like we've got all the dependencies again. Tighten this one up. Oh, right. Did it say that for the previous one? Let's look at that. I've just noticed that important notice that it's so important I didn't see it. This package is extracted from the. If KD Frameworks is built, do not build also build this package as presented here right okay so that's the first mistake so really I need to go back and right reinstall the equivalent package whatever that is okay fine 
but hopefully I haven't messed that up. Uh, let's go to KD Frameworks and look at the packages. So this is called K Window System. Right, so does that mean we've got two K window systems? Oh, I know why, because I installed it in a separate directory, didn't I? So let's remove the K Wayland and the K window system. I'll move into the KF5, extract K window system. and reinstall it and hope that I haven't messed anything up. I'll reinstall it with these instructions. Okay, five. Oh yes, it's installed it into user. Right, so I need to Tidy that up, release, build, testing off. Yeah, the settings are different. Okay, so I need to just run this to rebuild it. And run make install. And now I'm wondering about what I've installed in user. So is it user KF5? It's been installed in no user. Include KF5. Right, I'm going to try and tidy up what I've accidentally put in. Um, right, I think the first thing I better do is get a copy of this so I know what's been installed. And let's see if we've got some little notepad type thing. No, we don't seem to have any little text editor. And I haven't rebuilt Vim uh, for the GUI yet, so I can't use that. Uh, I'll just have to stick with LibreOffice Writer. So I'll paste that into there. Uh, where's that gone to? There it is. For some reason, these windows default to like a shrunk down version. Right, I think the first lot I'm going to do um, is to, well, first of all, I'll tidy this up. And then become root. Uh, then go to user include. We've got a KF5 there. So K archives there as well. And that's from uh, well, about two weeks ago. That must be me playing around with something. So I reckon I can probably delete that KF5 directory. Let's have a look in opt. KF5, KF5, uh, include KF5, 
yeah, there's all the rest of it there, and there's nothing there with today's date. So I think I can, and is there a K archive? Hopefully there is. Yes, there is. So I think I can remove KF5. And that means I can delete all of these that say include KF5. I'll get rid of that so there's a big chunk out of the way. Um, the next biggest one is use a share locale. So I'm going to share locale. QM. Right, so it looks like I've got to be careful because Falcon's in there. Hopefully. Um, K window system, so it's anything K window system. So they're the ones I've got to delete. Um, right, can I delete? Um, how do we do this in find? Is it RM minus V uh, curly brackets backslash semicolon, I think. Pass must be proceed. Oh, exec. I've got to put in to tell it to do that, to execute that command. Let's see if I can spell. Right, that looks good. So in theory, how many was there? Quite a few. In theory, that should be all of these deleted. Chekavian, Chekavian Latin, and Cyrillic. Valencia, yeah, that looks like that's all that lot, so I can get rid of all the locales. Oh, there's some more there. Did I not delete all of them correctly? Oh, several pages of them, crikey. Looks like they all start K window system, so that's okay. Right, so that's so we're left with just this few now, and they're all in uh, lib, but looks of it apart from the odd one. So let's go to a user lib and look for lib kf five. So there's six files there. So we've got five one oh nines in that list. SO five is Windows System dot SO is so they're all the ones on the right and the KF archive because archive looks like it got installed here as well somehow. Uh, so in theory, let's just check in opt KF five lib lib K KF five archive. Yep, they're there as well, so that's okay. I guess the only problem is if anything's linked against the ones in the user directory. I don't know if that will be a problem. But as far as I'm concerned, I can remove the lib kf5 window system files from here. And probably the archive as well take a punt on that. 
So that's that one and those two. Set runtime path of opt. Set runtime path. I'm not sure how that works, whether it adjusts that library that I've just deleted. So I'll have to ignore that. And anyway, it's been overwritten. The new ones have been put into opt. So now we've got lib plugins. KF5. Oh, I just realized, didn't it say that libarchive should have been installed into user? So I shouldn't be deleting it, so I'll have to reinstall that afterwards as well. Right, that's kwindow system. So that's that file there, so I need to delete that one. KF5, there is only that file, so I can delete the KF5 directory. So that's that one. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the runtime path is, where that gets set. Uh, now we need to go to sh uh, user share queue logging. And need to remove looks like those two there K window so RM K window system so those two and then back to user KF five. Uh, no, sorry, MK specs, MK specs. So that's not there. That's interesting. So that might be actually in the Qt5 directory, that file, regardless of whether it's been installed to use or not. So next we need to go to lib. CMake KF five window system Yeah, so it looks like I need to delete that directory. And that's those Four. And lastly, back to the include directory to delete KF5. Oh, I have deleted that directory, so that header file should have gone. So it's really only this QTK window system PRI that I don't know about. Let's see if we can find it. Right, so it is in opt, okay. So I'm not going to touch that because I've just reinstalled a K window system. So it should be set correctly. So now I need to uh, extract K archive. reinstall this into the user system because that's what was required for Falcon as I remember let me check this uh, let's go home search for Falcon um, 
Strictly speaking, only KRK archive is required, but several other packages can be used without presence. Build archive, K archive, download the package and use the build instruction on the page, changing the K5 prefix to user. Right, so let's go back to uh, the KDE page which was here and once again use these instructions but change the prefix to user so make the build let's see make For slash user build it and install it. So hopefully that's everything back to how it was. Um, there's a slight chance there's still things that are not quite right. But I'm hoping I haven't messed up things too much. So, K okay, window system. So, we don't need to install these two. Let's get rid of these two. Let's move on to K Wayland. It says the same. Same for that one. So, that explains why the solid. I recognized it's part of the K frameworks. Right, if Plasma is built, do not also build this package as presented here. So the rest for K for KD framework. So we haven't built Plasma yet. So I'm imagining it's going to be okay to build this. And when we come to do Plasma, that installation will overwrite this one or update this one. So I'm going to download this. Paste that in and go back and hopefully, like I say, nothing's been messed up. So this is lib case screen. Oh yes, this goes into user. So that kind of makes a bit more sense. So uh, we can install the directory and then there's a couple of files that are deleted. Um, I see this. Try and copy that again. Uh, let's see if the actual clipboard works now. Yes, it does. So lib k screen. So that may well get reinstalled as part of Plasma, but that shouldn't be a problem. So mu past the next. Again, these are straightforward commands to put in. Looks like we've got some tests to run this time. Zero test failed, so that's a complete pass. And we can install. That's done. So 
So next we go on to LXQT Build Tools. Download that. So build and install. Uh, sudo, let's see. So that's done. It's got LXQTXDG. QTX. Did that have a different LibQTXDG? LibQTXDG. Okay, so tar lib qtx well, I've got some options here. Uh, build tests. So we can run the test by passing that in. And we can build some dev utils which may or might not be usable, usable to the average person. Um, but we'll build them anyway. I guess so let's add these two in. So there's no indication as to how well these tests will run. It could be that they're a bit flaky and that's why they haven't got them um, the tests to run by default as they usually do. But we can see how we go and see what happens. So, no, it looks okay. So let's install su minus e. And that's done. LXQT menu data. LXQT dash menu. So just copy and paste for this one. And install. So lib LXQT. In straightforward build and install. Lib-lx. lib sysstat So you can see this is quite straightforward. There's nothing really to think about apart from copying and pasting the very quick to build. Uh, let's put a sudo minus c in front of that. QTXDG tools. Right, 
that's in our copy. Let's do it again. And put some more space in here. Installed and it's done. Lib FMQT. Install it and it's done. Alex QT themes next. It's done. Alex QT QT plugin. stuff to do here so let's build it and install it and become root to do the configuration to use the plugin in Qt5 environment variable Qt QPA platform so must be set to LXQT one way to do this is to add it in So that becomes part of the profile. So if we tidy this up now, LX QT QT plugin. So if I actually log in again as myself. to echo dollar qt underscore qpa there it is now and it is set so that's good lx qt about Sources PLFS so copy and paste and install. So 
So next we've got LXQT admin. So let's install that. And that's finished. LXQT open SSH ask pass. That is a mouthful. Pilot, pretty much the same. There's a few variations, but the build instructions are more or less the same. Uh, what was it called? Open SSH. LXQT sudo. that one done. LXQT config are required or plasma and XOR limb input. Okay, so we've got one of those requirements and as I say plasma will be something we're building later on anyway. Uh, not that we get, is it? It's tar. Excuse, I'll put that in there. No, I need to go in there as well. It's done. So now I've got something called OB Conf QT. Something to do with open box, perhaps, is it? Yes, it is. It's a little bit easier on the fingers. Uh, so let's copy that. Store. LXQT global keys. So this is actually quite a tedious desktop environment to install because it's just quite repetitive. Um, I wonder if in time 
they'll give us a script to build these packages possibly. Uh, so let's install that. this one global keys and XQT policy kit So that's done. LXQT session. I guess we must be getting quite close to the end of uh, these parts of the desktop environment, which make it a retro desktop environment. Uh, looks like we need to install an extra package here. XDG user does. So let's do this next. Uh, disable documentation, disable this, disable the installation menu, remove this if you've installed the optional dependencies. So yes, we've got that. So we can just put that in. And build a package and install it. And done. So that's that one. So back to LXQT session. Let's save that. Put it in the spreadsheet. Let's stick a bit more in here. So we've got a said. Okay, so we just copy all of this. And run make install. So we've got some configuration. Window managers other than open box may be used. XFWM. Oh, I see XFWM. Please note that ISWM is not a good substitute. Fluxbox does work. Although in this context with XQT. Open box is better. Okay, so I have to remember that the configuration file comes with many examples of window managers, and the ones which are installed will appear in the drop down list of LXQT config session. If one's not included, you can use LXQT config session search button. So let's have a quick nosy at that. See what's in it. Oh, it's quite a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Let's use Vi to look at it. Right. Um, yeah, like I say, this stuff that comes at the beginning here, I'm not sure what that is. Um, it could be that Vi needs to be rebuilt for the GUI to behave correctly, or it could be some other reason for it. So, yeah, I can see there's loads of different window managers in there. Um, a lot of which I've never heard of before. Didn't realise there's that many. So let's now tidy that up. So we might need to come back to that possibly if we want to tweak things.
PC Man FMQT. Try that again, it didn't. Yeah, that's what's happened. It hasn't copied correctly. So let's try it again. It's better. Right. So let's build it. And install. And to make PC Man FMQT easy to find in menus, adjust the desktop file again. As the root user, do this. Okay, so let's put that set command in, and that looks like that's done. Uh, QT. LXQT panel. So this has got one dependency we need to put in the looks of it. That's recommended. Libstat grab. Optional log for C plus. Okay, let's put this in next then. So configuring, oops, is my mouse going funny again? Configure and make. Make a check. Okay, that's done, so we can now install and tidy up. So libstat grab. So we can configure and make run some tests.
okay so that's finished testing there's a pass so let's now install and that's that done shut that down and back to Alex QT panel save the package and update the spreadsheet and extract I'm not sure why sometimes it doesn't copy unless I'm copying a line feed or something I'm not sure why okay so we've got all the dependencies there if KD Frameworks was not installed in user, help the code find some headers that it needs. So we need to put this in. And build. Okay, that's done. Let's install. And tidy up. So LXQT Power Management next. installed and next we've got LXQT runner Okay, just reading a description there of how to use this. It's like a quick prompt to run a command without actually opening command line, a bit like I think in KDE you can, I'm not sure if it's F2 or Alt F2, a bit like it's got there. Um, I think Windows has got a similar thing. I'm not sure about GNOME because I don't use GNOME, so I couldn't comment on that. Oh, I was actually trying to run it with the looks of it. <laughs> so I run that off Alex. So that's interesting, Alex QT runner. Looks like it was waiting for me to type something, so if I type bash no, it's, it's it looks like it can't run it from command prompt. That was just purely accidental. Um right, so that's done. I think we put the one in there, didn't we? Yep. So LXQT desktop final instructions. Please follow these instructions before starting LXQT for the first time. So required is open books or another window manager such as XF, WM or KWIN from Plasma. ISWM is not suitable. So it recommends breeze icons, which I think are part of Plasma anyway. And then a display manager as well in screensaver. So we've got, I'm going to be installing SDDM later on. 
we'll just install the breeze icons. So let's fetch them and install them. Right, so was the testing, the building of the test frameworks requires some modules of KD frameworks. So we have actually got KD frameworks, so it should, in theory, be okay to run that. Unless it means other modules which aren't listed in there, but I would have thought it would have mentioned that. So doesn't seem to complain about anything so let's now um, doesn't actually mention what to run so let's try and make tests oh, we've got four out of five anyway so maybe they're the modules that aren't actually installed by BLFS but um, do exist as part of the KDE frameworks so let's install Shut that down and tidy up. Um, so that's that. So we can do final database updates. The database, desktop databases need to be created or updated at this point. Run the following as the root. And once again, starting at XQT, if you're using X in it, and start X. Sorry to start. Um, you need to do these commands here. When it first starts, it'll ask you which window manager to use. BLF editors recommend using open box. At this point, both background and panel will be black. Right click on the background to bring up a menu and select from desktop preferences to change the background color or set a background image. Panel will be at the bottom of the screen, right click on the panel, bring up a menu like to customize the panel, including the widgets. So, application manager and task manager. Right, perhaps it might be an idea to look at this page actually in an XQT because there's quite a lot of information in there. So, I'm going to come out of this. Um, Let's save our spreadsheet, and shut it down, quit that, control Q on that, I'll log off here, and I'll select LXQT from here, there it is there. Right. Please select your default manager. Right, so it's strange that it doesn't come up with an open box. So we'll have to look for open box session, I imagine. Oh, is it that one there? That one there. Open. Okay. So it says everything's black and right click we've got menu desktop preferences let's try that all f2 yeah that's come up with the box to run a command as i thought it would do so let's type in falcon to get the browser up and yes it's found it so that's working quite nicely and that's better now we can read the rest of this see what to do so to start the bfs Editors recommend using open box. At this point, the background and panel will be black. Right click on the background to bring up a menu and selecting desktop preferences. We're allowed to change the background color or set an image. 
So background, we can change the color. Apply, yeah, that works. And wallpaper mode. Um, to be quite honest, I don't know. Oh, let's. Right, so now we can select an image. Um, I haven't really got a clue where any would be. Uh, let's try user. Could do a different view on this list. Directory tree. That's outside. Um, let's see if we can change this to detailed list view. That's better. User share. Is there anything LXQT here? LXQT, yeah. Wallpapers. Right, let me change this back now to the icon view, yeah. Uh, I don't know, let's pick some flowers maybe. Open that. Yep, that seems to have worked okay. So we've got a background now. Um, the panel will be at the bottom of the screen. Right clicking on the panel will bring up a menu that allows you to customize a panel. So it's this page here. Configure panel. Uh, including adding widgets and setting the background color. So um, can't see the whole styling, is it? Let's set a font color. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's do yellow. And background color. Let's make that blue. Okay, well, the Obviously, there's nothing in there at the moment for the foreground color to appear. Um, looks like we'll do a background image as well. So let's go to user, share, Alex QT again, panel maybe. No, maybe it has to be the Papers. Um, let's try that one. Triangles. Yeah, let's come up with something. Um, so placement is obviously where it is, so it's okay at the bottom for me. Widgets. Let's add a widget. Right, okay. Application menu. That sounds like a good start. CPU monitor. System stats, sensors, okay, so I get a bit silly here. Volume control, task manager, clock. So, um, right, that yellow is not very easy to read, so let's change that to something a bit nicer. That's a bit better. Um, so I don't know how we move these around, can we? I'm not sure how we place them. Oh, is it here, is it? So, application menu, is that that button there? Yeah, there's no logo on it for some reason. I thought it might be a logo. CPU monitor, let's move that down. at the end volume control task manager sensors task manager is obviously the bit in the middle I think that'll do apply that one so that really is it it's a shame there's not a logo there so I'm not sure if that's something that could be changed let's 
Oh yes, there is one here. Oh yes, the, that has appeared now. I can see it. The, it doesn't appear very well. Um, so it looks like ever since I've changed this, it's appeared. So that's okay. So yeah, that appears to be working okay. Um, because there's no reason why I can't stay here and use this. Let's see if we can get a terminal up. So that's terminal. Office. Get the spreadsheet up. Yeah, that's still working. Recent documents. That's fine. Uh, let's see what other things we might have for the first time here. No, it looks like there's no. Oh, yeah, we haven't installed any extra um, applications yet, which is the next section. But apart from that, everything looks to be all working. Uh, right, let me check the preferences again in case. Oh right, there it is. So that looks looks like it's retained its settings. That must be a common uh, power management. Let's check the uh, system tools preferences. Yeah, the screensaver. I imagine this is going to be common. Yes, it's still the same. So hopefully the screen won't turn off at all. Let's check the size of the terminal here, 85, so that hasn't changed either. That's okay. Right, that's all good. So what I think I'll do now is to, it looks like the font's a bit different here actually. Let's see if we can change the font. It looks a bit different. Deja vu, oh no, it is the same. Maybe it's just the way it's been rendered. If it's got more anti-aliasing, perhaps. Uh, yeah, it just looks slightly different somehow. Maybe something like the anti-aliasing wasn't working before in uh, uh, LXDE, and now we're in a bit more of a modern environment. It is working. Uh, let's see if we can change the colour of that clock. That's not very obvious. Uh, no, there's no. actual colour setting there, unfortunately. Just leave it like that. Um, right, so let's do some applications now, some LXQT applications. So the first one I've got is LX Image QT. So that's still saving in the same place. Right, so there's lots of information there to be viewed, which is why this is going on for so long, this window. That's okay. Right, I'll leave it there. LX image. So I'll copy and paste. Let's 
install and if xtg utils have installed we can run this and that's done so let's look for that alex image there it is there and that seems to be okay Let's actually try and open that share LXQT folder with the wallpapers in. Yeah, that's good. So we can browse these. There's some quite nice images that come with default by the looks of it. Arch Linux uses this as default. Things that came up, or it's somehow related to that project, I don't know. Okay, so that works fine. That's what we just built. So let's tidy up. LXQT Archiver. So I imagine this is probably going to use K Archive as the back end. I guess this will be quite a good test of whether uh, the K archive package is working or not. Uh, right. Okay, let's install that. That's done. Let's open it up. Uh, accessory, I guess. No. Oh, right. Okay, it's got a full name. LXQT file archiver. There it is. There. Let's open. Let's go to sources BLFS. And let's open that one. Yeah, that seems to work. Let's view that item. I imagine it's a text file. Yep, that works fine. So that's. I, like I say, I assume it's working using the K-Archiver background. Um, might not be because it didn't say there's any requirements for KD frameworks, but there's a good chance it is. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do was just to run the about LXQT. Right, yeah. Okay, so let's tidy that up. LXQT, did I put that in the book? Yes, LXQT notif notification daemon. or build it rather then we can install it so I'm not sure how this can be tested oh it looks like there's a configuration tool there so it's, it looks like it's to configure where and how long it appears for 
I've no notification teams running a fullback will be used. So it could be why that other notification team wasn't running. Maybe I hadn't started a demon for some reason, for some particular reason. POV U control QT. We can use PV control QT, yeah. And yeah, it doesn't look much difference to the ordinary POVU control. I guess it's probably been themed slightly more for LX, uh, yeah, LX QT. QPS, Q process manager, QT process manager. Okay, we can update the icons by the looks of it. Oops. QPS. It's quite a nice process manager actually, a bit flashy. No, it's just got a little long rotating bar to show that it's working in the corner there. It looks quite a, quite a nice little uh, process manager that. Next Q term widget. Oh, let's tidy up. Terminal widget, right, okay, so this is something that will be added to the panel at the bottom, I guess. Not something that will be done, run directly. <coughs> so let's try that out now. Configure. Manage widgets, yeah. Add and this was QT term widget. Right, um, I guess we need to restart LXQT. Maybe let's do a edgy config. Try that again. Actually, maybe that might CPU monitor. Okay, 
Uh, I reckon it probably needs uh, some more widget for QT. Unless it's something not directly runnable, it just makes it available for something else. I'm not quite sure how how this will be tested. Let's try that. Oh, I see. It just adds it, doesn't it? Let's get rid of that. Just notice there's a configuration there. Oh, yes, we've done that, haven't we? Okay, so, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Let's try the next package, Qt Terminal. Oh, maybe that library is used by this actually, that would make sense. Q terminal. I've just noticed something actually. When I clicked on this, the OK and the cancel buttons are now swapped around. And the default is OK because the default is the, always the left button. So I wonder if that's why previously in TWM I was pressing enter download stuff and it was working. And then when I moved to LXDE, it swapped the buttons around the way it rendered the windows, and the default was then cancel. So that's interesting that that's at the behest of the um, window manager. Right, so uh, did I put this in the spreadsheet? I did. Oh yes, Qterm widget is a requirement, so that's why that library is needed. Okay, so I imagine we've got this somewhere in here now. XFC terminal that is there. Well, it doesn't look much different to the LX terminal. I imagine. It's similar. Uh, appearance. So I've got this set to 14. The other font looks virtually identical. So it's got more options on the menu of the look. So it might be a preferable one to use. But I worry about that next time I restart so that's okay and it's got screen grab some headers and we may even have this still active we've all no they're not right so export those two build the package install the package and then as root run this command to update the icons I imagine so obviously screen grab I imagine that's going to be something that takes screenshots uh, let's how does this work takes screenshots okay yep that's obviously worked you can see the desktop in the window there and there's an option to save it as well So that looks like that's the end of LXQT and all its applications. So I think I'm going to have a little break and probably carry on with GNOME next. It looks like that's got quite a few packages to install. Um, then 
and so I'll probably do KDE after that and then just go around and deal with some of the individual well I'll probably deal with some of the individual uh, utilities that are more useful on the command line and then perhaps deal with the more of the top level um, patches such as Firefox and Thunderbird and so on Right, so let's get on with doing GNOME. So as you can see, a lot of the uh, dependencies for GNOME are all installed, as I've already mentioned, because of the desktop environments and the window managers we've already installed. So let's just go to the first start of GNOME to see if there's any anything we need to set up. And it doesn't look like it. It looks like we just go straight in to build the packages. So what I'm going to do is just pick out the ones that haven't been highlighted because it's uh, going to be pretty obvious that they're the ones that need to be installed. So I'll start with Yelp XSL. So I'm just making a note that this is the start of GNOME here, and I can't remember where, I think this was the start of LXQT, I can't remember where. Uh, XFC started. I'll worry about that another time. So Yelp XSL should be downloaded. Let's extract it. Configure and install. Uh, what happened there? So that's that. I've got to, to close these down. And uh, next one's gconf. Is that spelt with capital G? Is it the download? Yes, it is capital GC. So we've got some extra options here. It says this which is required if Orbit 2 is not installed. Orbit 2 is a deprecated package, so we'll leave that in. Oh, and disable static, so we can just copy and paste this. and install so that's installed so no menus next and make install that's no menus next we've got no video effects
So that's built, Ninja installed, and that's done. Shut that one down. Next, got Grilo. No dependencies. Uh, is this capital? No. Okay. Um, so we can set the enable GTK doc to true to build some documentation. So let's put that in and then that. I say you could probably leave this out, but by putting true in, not only are you specifying true and overriding any default it's also visible as to what your intention is as well it's obvious so ninja to build and that failed all right so why is that failed if it's interesting it's complaining about something to do with kf5 Link input file unused because linking not done. Earlier, I wonder if that's because of what I've done before. <coughs> oh dear, it's a directory. Right, I wonder if that is, that is because of what I've done before with KF5, but I can't see anything there that's anything to do with KF5, to be quite honest. Um, I'll try without the documentation option in case it is that, although I doubt it very much. <clears throat> Let's have a look on. Let's get a separate tab up, would be better. Um, right, where's the menu on here? Let's put that in and see what that says.
Um, it's not those flags you had set. On. Oh, yes, I bet it's that. So that's a remnant from um, what we were doing before from LXQT. Now, which was it? One of these that had that in. I've got to find. I can't remember what the other one was. Was it C flags? Maybe. Yes, it was. So I need to unset them, I think, and that should hopefully fix it. I did wonder at the end it didn't say to unset them. And I thought that's a little bit strange, and obviously it does make a difference. So let's try and rebuild this again. And let's copy the meson command with the doc equals true. And build. Yep, that's better. That's what's caused the problem. So that has finished. Now run the tests. So I think there's a couple of pages with those CXX and CX flag sets. So they both really need to have a note at the bottom saying, uh, you know, to unset them both. So ninja install. And that's done. So let's now go back to GNOME. Next, we've got Lib Champlain. So let's download this. Oh, actually, we've got a dependency first for the looks of it. Yep, Clutter GTK. That requires Clutter. And that requires Coggle. Right, now these three, I seem to have problems, I don't know if you men remember I mentioned that I had problems with mutter, I think it's all around this area, it's mutter, clutter business, whatever they have to do with um, last time I built this I seem to have problems building and getting them to work um, and I couldn't fathom out what it was and I, I vaguely remember either GNOME, GNOME didn't work properly or I had to abandon GNOME completely so I'll see what happens this time Let's put that into the spreadsheet. Okay, uh, may fail when building with multiple processes. Okay, so we'll see how it goes. Let's copy the configure command. And check to see if there's anything else to support. So they're enabling, enabling uh, embedded GL. And so enable. So we can enable GStreamer support. And we don't want to enable API documentation. So let's see how we get on with that. So build All right, it says make check, but only um, a couple will actually pass. So let's 
Let's see if we get a similar result.
Okay, well indeed that was almost a waste of time really. Um, in fact, I'm not sure if any of them did pass the looks of it. Um, so yeah, a bit pointless. Um, so let's install uh, Coggle. And that's failed on the install. Now this is the sort of thing I seem to remember I had problems with before. <coughs> Let's try that again. Alright, it's worked the second time. Uh, so that's the parallel bit that's not working maybe. Uh, not really sure. It's a bit of a, bit of a flaky program by the looks of it to, to build at least. Uh, right, so that's that done. Let's do clutter next. Uh, anything built with talking this hardware 3D acceleration from the graphics driver. So we've got that. Uh, as you've seen, I think I've already shown GLX gears runs perfectly well. <clears throat> um, expanded, it's it's running at a good speed. Um, in fact, I didn't leave that long enough for the looks of it to get a good result and let's leave it for 10 seconds and also the GLX info shows that hardware acceleration is in operation so although it's only the Intel chip it's it's hardware accelerated it's adequate so let's see if that's enough yeah I see 60 frames per second so it's keeping up on a an HD screen so that's okay um, yeah, the direct rendering is the way to check. So GLX in info and grep for DRI. Uh, it's not there for enough. Uh, let's do less. Uh, accelerated, yes, it actually says accelerated. So there's there's no ambiguity about that whatsoever. M maybe the output's changed. I'm sure it used to say DRI as part of the output, but now it's less ambiguous. So let's install Clutter. So we've got configure here with some options down the bottom. So let's just double check what they do. Input backend and compositor. Okay, so there's nothing to change here at all. And build. Um, it says they're about running the test. Some may hang forever, so I'm not even bother attempting to run that. In that case, I'll just go for the install. So these packages I have problems before, and they're, they're obviously a, a little bit ropey in the building process, um, for whatever reason that might be. So that's clutter. It looks like we've had a touch with a little bit more success this time. So let's now install clutter GTK. So all we need Okay, that's the mouse jumping around. Just copy and paste this, no API documentation required. And install, and that's done. So 
So back to the lib champ plane, there's all the dependencies installed so we can download it. Just copy and paste this. Ninja install to put it in the system and it's done. So back to the main menu, we've got libg next. No dependencies to fill in configure and make we've actually got a make check to run this time to test the results And that's a pass, so now let's God, this mouse. install the package and it's done. Next, libps. Okay, no extra options. Download and install. So we've got some extra options here. So let's create the temporary build directory, copy the moves and set up, and see if there's anything to modify. So we can generate VIPI data because we've got that. And add demos false if you do not wish to build a demo program, so I can leave them in, I guess. So we'll compile like that. Run Ninja. Don't want the API documentation, so we'll run the test next and then Ninja install. And it's done. Next lib shoemate. Shumate, not sure, sure how to pronounce that one. Save that. So copy and paste. Uh, right, so let's now run the tests. That's a pass, so we can install. And it's done. So that's all the libraries. Now we can build some of the uh, actual components that form part of the desktop itself and then as you see we'll go on to building some um, applications so Nautilus is the first desktop component requires libportal
if the previous version is installed, so no, we haven't got that. So let's go to build backends. This which allows you to set the available backends. You can use it to disable dependency. The default is to build all three. Okay, let's do just that first of all and see if there's any output at the end to confirm that. It's found them. So it looks like it's found Qt5, it's found GTK4, GTK3, and it looks like GTK2 doesn't get a look in. So that's fine. Let's build it. and install so that was lib portal did i do that yes i did so now we can build nautilus location store the API documentation so I'll put this in even though I'm not going to install the API documentation um, I see Linux is set to false right okay so it's just the default options as it is so we can copy and paste all of this So let's run the test. It says one will fail if you haven't installed Tracker Miners, which we have. So we hopefully won't see that failure. Um, but one test is known to time out if running the tests in a large home directory. Oh, if, if the user running the test is a large home directory, well, it isn't large. So uh, hopefully it should be okay.
right, so that did fail with a timeout on one of them. Um, not sure why, because um, oh, it does say the one that fails on timeout. Uh, oh, that's the one with the large home directory. Well, there's definitely not a lot in my home directory. Um, don't know what they mean by large anyway. So anyway, um, that's catered for. And we can now install that. The tests are okay apart from that expected. So we haven't done this um, install method, so I don't need to do that command. We can just tidy that up. We should be able to run this here actually. Just to check it works. And yes, there it is. This is one thing that annoys me about the GNOME programs is like the package is called Nautilus. There's always been no Nautilus as far as I know. And then the title of it is Files and there's no mention of Nautilus and it's just really confusing. Uh, I get quite thrown by that a lot. And the other thing is the menuing system is not always that obvious. I think it's one of the big things that puts me off using GNOME. Apart from that, it looks really nice. You know, it looks really modern. Uh, okay, I'm not sure why that hasn't quit properly. It's not giving us the prompt back, so I'm going to do Control C. Uh, not sure why that was still running in the background. So anyway, that's Nautilus. Um, go on to GNOME shell extensions now. So let's download. That. No shell extensions. Okay, so simple instructions, copy and paste. Just install it. Done. Okay, that's that one done. And we want to know tweaks. Uh, there's no dependencies there. paste and install no user docs Simple configure and make and install. Okay, it looks like for some reason it's installing documentation for every single language, uh, which is uh, maybe a little bit daft.
install uh, as the root user. Finding what I've just done. There we go. Okay, that's done. So get rid of that and now we can install these two runtime packages CDR tools so this needs CDR tools so we better do that one first so okay so save that <clears throat> and go back CDR tools So build it by running the following commands. So it looks like there's no additional information to alter this. It says it doesn't support parallel build, which is why we've got minus J1 on the make command. Okay, so that's built. Now let's become the root to install it. Okay, that's done. Clear that up and shut that down, and now we can do DVD plus RW tools. And we'll extract it. So install by running the follow commands, so let's copy and paste those. And install with these commands. <coughs> and that's done. So we should be able to run Brazero now, check it works, although obviously limited. Uh, running, so what would this be under accessories, maybe? Okay, it's got this other sound and video. Yeah, there it is. So, yeah, that's run. Um, let's see if we can add something. Uh, let's do that picture. We oh, we're on audio, aren't we? 
let's do a new project, data project, add uh, that picture. Yep, so that's added. Create a data disk. It's going to create an image by the looks of it. So I presume it will create that image. Um, I don't know if there's an option to. <clears throat> Let's see if we can do eject. Yes, it's not found the disk because there's not one in the system. So this, you could probably, I imagine, create actual ISO images on the hard disk, but um, not do actually, actually any burning at all. But yeah, it seems to be working okay. So cheese next for taking photos and videos. I'll use to yeah take photos and videos. So we need one dependency here. Cut to GST. Okay, so uh, minimal instructions, just a bog standard instructions to build. Install. Uh, GST. So that's that. Now we can do cheese. Well, I haven't got any uh, webcams or cameras to plug into this or anything like that. So um, there's little point in adding these in apart from if the compile complains about things. But there's no notes of that. Um, so uh, just checking the explanations for the commands. Doesn't look like there's anything to tweak there. So I'll just copy and paste as it is, <clears throat> run the tests, all ok, so ninja install and it's done. So I'll attempt to run it, I don't know what I can do with it actually, but um, and or even where it would be, uh, graphics I guess. Say something then. Sound and video, probably. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I see no device, so I guess there's nothing I can do with this. But at least it's loaded and seems to be working okay. So EOG, I have GNOME. No dependencies, let's fetch it. Uh, so we've got portal. So we can change that to true. Let's create the temporary build directory, copy the meson setup command. Is there anything else? No. So let's install that as it is. Let's run ninja. and install the package and we need to run this as well and that's that package
package done. Let's see if we can find that one under some video. More graphics this time, is it? Image view, is it that one? Yes, it is. So let's see if we can navigate to our pictures. Yep, there it is. full screen on it yes it will so that's confusing because that now does look like the desktop <laughs> so yeah that seems to be working fine so let's tidy that up <clears throat> events I think this is a PDF viewer yeah it's quite a nice one as well I quite like this uh, you usually install this even though I use KDE it's uh, quite a good one. So let's download this. So what options have we got? There's a few there by the looks of it. So let's create the temporary build directory. Copy the meson setup and take a look at the options. So they're basically things that they're disabling that we want left on really. So it doesn't look like there's anything else to alter there that would be beneficial. We can just double check. No, oh, right. Nautilus extension is not being built. Why is that? Okay, let's add that in and put Nautilus equals true. I'm not sure why it hasn't found that. Um, oh, we need to put reconfigure in, don't we? Okay, so it looks like there's an extension missing from Lib Nautilus, and that's why it wasn't working or hasn't found it. So it's being sensible. Um, I'm not sure why Postscript's not working either, because um, I thought that uses, oh, Lib Spectre it needs, right, okay. <clears throat> um, but apart from that, that looks good, so let's run. And to uh, Ninja install. And that's it. So let's just test to see if it loads. Uh, probably accessories, maybe. No. Uh, Oh yes, under Office Document Viewer, so uh, I'm not sure whether there's some PDFs. <coughs> <coughs> I imagine there's some under uh, User. User uh, Share. Uh, what had a load of documentation? LLVM did. I seem to remember that took a while to build or install. Uh, uh, it's not there. Uh, let's try KDE. No. Okay, let's do a find user share. There's a load there, so let's go to cups for the looks of it. Cups. Um, IPP 
tool. That sounds like a good one. Well, it's not particularly big, but oh, okay. That hasn't worked. It says app file type. Oh, it's a gzip, apparently. Okay, let's try something else then. Uh, let's try graph bings. That's a document. Oh, there's a Vince there. Let's see if a Vint no, hasn't got anything. Uh, Groff. One, two, three. Font. Dev PDF. Map. Oh, I see. That's just the directory name, isn't it? Um, well, what about text live? Surely that must have something. Oh, if that's not there, that's because it's in its own directory. Uh, there must be something useful here. Examples, right, go script examples. Uh, examples. Right, that's better. So... Yeah, you can see there's literally examples. <clears throat> Let's try another one. Uh, spots, this is a tiny one. So that's probably presumably for setting up a printer. There's a graphical image with some line art, so that's obviously working. And a text graph as well. So yeah, you can see that's working fine. Okay, so let's tidy that up. Shut that down. The next one is evolution. This is an integrated mail calendar and dress book suite. So we've got a couple of dependencies here. Bogo filter. Slide that in the background tab. So, Bogo filter. Um, if you do not install the recommended GSL, okay. Plan to change the version of your database library, so we're not doing that either. So, right, we can alter the configure to modify which database we use. <clears throat> um, but it doesn't say what the default is. The switch allows you to change the default database from, oh, from DB to either QDBM, SQLite 3, or Tokyo Cabinet. So let's just leave the default. Um, not sure what advantages there would be apart from whether you may only have one of those installed. Let's build and make check to run some tests. And that's all good. Install is done. So that's Bogo filter. The next one we've got is Seahorse, which has got all its dependencies. So Seahorse. So it looks like all we do is copy and paste this. And install. So now we can install Evolution. 
Let's fetch it. So we've got some options here we might want to look at. Let's build the uh, temporary directory, create the temporary directory, copy the CMake command. I'm going to turn the weather off because like I say, for privacy issues, you might want to do that as well. Uh, not part of BLFS, not part of BLFS. Maps contact. So we have done that. Uh, markdown. We haven't got that. Whether I've turned off with the help equals off. Looks like it defaults to on. And open all that. So we've got that. And that's going to default, so we'll use that. And when that's done, we'll build. Okay, so let's install that. And there's no configuration, so let's see if we can find that. Will that be accessories? No. Authentication. Office, probably. Yeah, there it is. Uh, don't change. So it probably wants me to set stuff up that obviously I haven't got, so I'll just cancel that. But you can see the windows loaded okay. Uh, got the contacts calendar, tasks, memos, etc. So it looks like pretty standard sort of personal information manager and email client. So I'll tidy that up and move on to file roller. What does this do? Oh, it's like an archiver or an archive manager rather. So Unra would have installed this anyway, so it's handy that it's here. There's no dependencies. Let's download it. So build it and install. And it's done. Uh, did that do it? No, it didn't. What happened there? Uh, sudo find C install. That's better. So that's done. Now do file roller. So, is there any other options? Package kit, API docs, no, doesn't look like it. So, we'll take that. 
tackle that. Become root and install. Um, so we can do this update as well. And that's done. Close that down. Uh, I suppose we could test this uh, again. Where's this going to be? Accessories again? Probably, yeah. No, archive manager. There it is. So, um, yeah, let's open that one. Well, let's open the original actually, so I don't. Oh no, there's the current one which should be out of date now. Yeah, let's open that one. So, yes, again, you can see. This is working fine. Let's have a look at that. And there's some information there. So that's all good. Next we've got GNOME Calculator. So download. Okay, so uh, fairly straightforward instructions to build. And to test. All good. Let's paste that to install it. And it's done. So let's quickly look for that calculator. Looks fairly standard. I'll take it that's 534 times pi equals six, 1677. Okay, uh, so let's shut that one down and move on to. So, Color Manager has already been installed, so. Um, Yes, it's, yeah, color profile viewer. I imagine it's that one. Yes, looks like it's a GNOME interface. So that's that one. GNOME disk utility. Uh, let's fetch that. So simple enough, copy and paste. Have I got an error? Why is that? Is it missing a dependency? Uh, what did this say? Nothing apparently wrong there. No idea for constraint link. End. Oh, it did actually finish despite these two errors. That's a little bit misleading, I think. So let's do ninja install, and it has actually installed correctly, so they're just misleading messages. And disk utility, let's see if we can find that one. It actually do applications used for dealing with storage devices. Oh, is it this one here? 
Yeah, that might be it. Discs. Yeah, name disk utility. See why it's called that and then it's given another name. It's just so confusing for, you know, people like us who are installing packages and then the name of the package is totally unrelated to the, not the business name, if you like, the name you see on screen. It's like they're trying to make this the de facto disk utility by calling it disks because you see it disks and you're not confused as to what it might be to do with possibly. Uh, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit confusing and frustrating. So, um, I don't know what that is. Oh, that might be the card reader on the machine, possibly, because there's nothing plugged in. Um, but yeah, that's the disk. You can see the, uh, well, there's Windows partitions there. You can see NTFS and then the Linux partition is probably that one there, I imagine. So that seems to work okay. Right, so maps next. So let's download that. Oh, we downloaded it from the wrong location. Let's do it in the five sum. No maps. Yep, that's okay. So extract no maps. So again, copy and paste. Oh, that's got a signal trap. Not supported, so it looks like we've got to specify which version of soup we want to use, possibly. So let's view the... Well, first of all, I'm going to tidy this directory up. To start, so we can start again. Then let's look at the meson underscore options. Oh, there's no options there at all. Oh, so I don't know how we're going to be able to specify which version of LibSoup to use. It hasn't got it. There's a dependency there. Option profile type choice of default development value default. Well, I'll try it once more. Let's do a LD config. Make the build done. So just try the setup. Uh, tool. Anything about lib soup there? No, there's no mention there at all. So, Ninja, yeah, it's fading right at the very end. In the same process, is not supported, so can I do? Ninja jobs equals one. No, it's still failing. Let's try from the start. So I'll put ninja jobs equals one there as well in case it detects it there. And then rerun Ninja on one thread. No, it's still failing. Yes, yeah, it's, 
it's definitely something to do with the number of threads because it's failed on th uh, job 78 there instead of 81 I think it was before Uh, let me check to see how, make sure I'm running that pro properly. Uh, read online. Yeah, it's just... The number when the ninja is invoked from the command line, passing the minus J and will limit the number of parallel processes. Oh, so let's try that ninja minus J one. Oh, it's still not having it. Definitely ninja jobs. Oh, I see. So it's definitely running on one. It's just failing sooner because it's not being able to spawn further processes. Well, uh, I'm not really sure what I can do about that, apart from not install this package. Uh, let's see what the BLFS page has got, if it's got anything about this. There's nothing there about it at all. Um, well, all I could do is try to install it, but I, I don't think it's going to be much benefit. Um, no, it has failed, so it's just no point in uh, trying to build that so I, I can't explain why that's happened and there's certainly no way of deciding which version of soup the tool should use so let's try no net tool next one time dependencies uh, let's have a look at these Oh, right, okay, These. this is the client side, not the server, okay, so that's all right. So we'll install this then. So let's get this fella done. Download it. I'll put a note next to this saying it's broken. Right, so back to bind utilities. Right. 
on time for a break soon and making a few errors. So looks like there's no options to set just copy and paste the commands here looks like they're built individually these tools and installed individually as well so I'll just wait for these to build Okay, that's done. So come root and install all these tools. And that's done. So tidy that up. Next, we need end map. which needs lib linear There's a note there about updating from an earlier version. So we'll build it with this. And install it. And that's done. And now we can do end map. Hey, there's a bit of ASCII art going on in with this package with the looks of it. That's done. Let's run some tests. That's done. So we'll install it. Yeah, it says it's successfully installed, so we can clean up. And next we've got this trace route. So it says it, it overwrites the installed iNet Utilities version of trace route because this version is more powerful. So let's, oh, let's get a new tab. Okay, so we'll do is make and install it. It says the trace route one file that was installed in LFS by INET Utils is no longer relevant. Okay. 
So sudo minus e su, paste that in, and that's done. And finally, who is? So again, we just build this. It says you can install the Whois program, the Make Password program, and the locale files independently. Control your choice of what is installed with the following commands issued as a root user. Installing this version of MK Password will overwrite the same command installed in LFS. So, um, I suppose there's no harm in doing that. They've listed those commands there, so let's do all three. Done. So now we can install GNOME Net Tool. We've got the package itself and a patch, so we'll right click, click Save Link As to avoid opening it in the browser. Net tool. So put the patch in, then another fix and build a package. and install the package. And that's done. So let's have a quick look for that. No net tool. Uh, it's not that one, is it? Let's see what the oh, it's just called Gnome Net Tool. I think I'm not sure if that Zen Map is something that Nmap uh, generates. Yeah, it is. So I'm not going to touch that because I'm not really au okay with Nmap and networking type stuff. Uh, system Tools, Network Tools. There it is. So once again, I'm not going to uh, dabble around with this too much, but obviously the windows appeared. So I'm not sure if that worked. Let's see if I can ping well, the gateway. I guess that's worked. It's a direct route, so like I say, I'm not really that au okay with this sort of stuff. But yeah, the Windows worked, so it's a good indication that it's all functional. So GNOME Power next. GNOME Power Manager. So just copy and paste. Run tests. That's all okay. And install. Let's have a look at that one. Uh, 
the system tools again, I guess. Maybe not. Power manager, is it that one? No. Accessories. No, again, unless it's got some other weird file name, I, I don't really know what it is called. So let's try run it from the command line. Name, oh, name power statistics. Okay. Well, I guess if this machine had a battery, which it doesn't because it's a desktop machine, there might be some more information there. But apart from that, it looks um, not a great deal of use on this machine. So next one, screenshots. We've already seen that. We've already tested that. So I'll just skip over onto system monitor. And we'll download that. Uh, so just copy and paste this. Oops. And install the package. And that is done. So let's now tidy that up. See if we can find that one. Uh, system monitor must be that one. Yes, it is. So those are the processes, resources used by the different CPUs, network, etc and mounted file systems with the looks of it. So that's all done. Seems to be working fine. So next we've got GNOME Terminal. So look, search provider. Okay, we don't need that. Okay, yeah, we can just copy and paste all the commands. So let's do that one first. Then build it. Run some tests. That looks all okay. And install. To run GNOME Terminal, the environment variable laying must be set to UTF-8 locale prior to starting the graphical environment. So it is at the moment, so it should be okay. Let's see if we can run that. Uh, what's this going to be called? Is it that one there, do you think? 
As I say, they seem to want to use generic names. It looks like it might be. Yes, it is. So it's got rather strange font there at the moment. It's quite a lot of space there. Uh, preferences. Text. So it looks like it's a default font they've used, yeah. Which is why it looks a bit strange. So yeah, that's the same font as I've got at the moment. Uh, it's a bit easier on the eye. So that looks okay. So there's Gnome Terminal done. Next we've got Gnome Weather. So again, this might be something that potentially exposes your location, which might be something you want to avoid happening if uh, privacy is a concern for you. So it looks like we'll just build this as it is. Run the tests and install it. It's done. So let's look for that one. Uh, let the accessories or office maybe no system tools. Oh, there it is there, it is under accessories. So let's put London in. And yeah, I guess that's pretty accurate. So that's quite a nice little app actually. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen this before. Or if I have, it's just been at a glance. So. Yeah, that's quite good. Okay, so then we've got Goo Char Map. So we've got a few downloads here. UCD already exists. Okay, so we've already downloaded that one by the looks of it. So let's cancel that. Oh, this package used two unversioned downloads. You may want to rename these to version name, e.g. use UCD 15. I presume that UCD you had before is the same package. Let's uh, take a look at it. It 
does look like it's to do with character sets. So uh, let's look at the other one, which is Unihan. Uh, with a capital U, by the looks of it. Unihan. Yeah, that's got similar. So yeah, we have definitely obviously downloaded that for something else. So I'll do what they suggest. Let's move UCD dot zip to UCD dash fifteen dot zero dot zero and Unihan to Unihan dash fifteen dot zero dot zero. Okay, so let's extract the Goo Char map again. Oh, it's still there, so let's change into it then. So there are some options here, so let's do all this first. Oh, okay. I've told us to change the name, but the instructions actually state the... Uh, right, let's do this a piece at a time then. So let's go back, remove the build, and start doing a bit at a time. So we'll do that one first. Now I'll do unzip UCD with the version. Then copy the Unihan file, tab to complete the version. Uh, that's got to go with a full stop to copy it here. Pop D to go back. Now we can copy the meson setup. Take a look at the options. So let's change docs equals true to build documentation. And the other two, if you haven't installed the dependencies, which we have done, so we'll carry on with the rest of the meson command as it is. Let's build. And looks like we can now install And that's done. So Goo Char Map is the executable. Let's see where this is going to be. Character Map, it'll be that one. Yeah, okay, that's pretty explanatory as to what it is. So that's quite a useful tool. The next one is Seahorse, which we've already done. Let's see if that's a tool in its own right or just a, yes it is, for managing using encryption keys. Passwords and keys, it must be that one. Okay, I don't know how we find, how we do a belt on this one. Maybe it's out there, is it? Yep. Yeah, there it is, Seahorse. So that seems to be okay. And the final application we've got is Vinagra. A VNC client, so we need a dependency. GTK VNC. And we don't need to do that, so we'll just copy and paste this as it is. And install. So that's that done. 
GTK VNC. So now we can install Vinagra. So that's just an explanation. So we'll put these set commands in and copy and paste the configure and make. And install. Right, so I guess all I'll be able to do with this is to start it up. Uh, I've got nothing to connect to. Uh, remote desktop viewer yeah it started as a message there so it doesn't wrap around properly that's possibly a bug but yes, I haven't got any terminals to connect to, so that's probably all I can do there. But yes, it seems to be working. So that is all of GNOME installed. The only thing I can do now is to actually start GNOME up. So I'll save the spreadsheet. Shut this. Oh. Shut this window down, shut that one down, and log out. Okay, and I'll switch this to GNOME on Xorg. I'll try first, make sure it works properly. Okay, there's the desktop. Uh, Let's get the file manager open. That seems to be all right. Activities. Okay, I'm not sure how to drive this. All oh, right, okay. So there's, again, all the apps we've seen that we can run. Uh, let's try GIMP. Yep, that's fine. Let's try a GNOME application. I don't know what that one is. Highlight. Formatted text converter. Okay. Let's try another one. Uh, trying to remember what some of the files were we've just been installing. Uh, Task Manager, well that's one, even though it's not really an application, but yeah, it's working. Uh, oh no, that's not the GNOME one, is it? No. Is that called System something? Yeah, System Monitor, that's it. Yeah, that's the GNOME one. So yes, it's all, all seems to be working okay. Uh, oh, Brazero, let's try that. Yep, that's come up okay as well. So you can see it's all quite nippy and working fine. So I think what I'll do now is to shut down the machine, just make sure that all the libraries are loaded for before I carry on. Um, and carry on in the next session. If I can find my way out of here, so it'll be that one, won't it? Log out. Okay, and I'll set this back to. Oh, should I try no more whale and see if that behaves any differently before I finish up? Looks the same actually. Can't see any difference. Let's try evolution this time. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be any difference. I guess it's probably the better one to use. It's 
going to be the way to go. So that's all fine. Let's switch it back to LXQT. And we're back in there. So what I'll do now is just shut down and carry on in the next session. Okay, so here we are, just rebooted. Get back in again. I'm not even sure if this LXQT remembers the windows that are, have been left open. So let's go to preferences first, if there is a an option from that. Desktop manager is not active. Okay. Take that's for GNOME, I imagine, or um, oops, XFCE maybe. Let's try just shutting down or logging out and see if it does retain. Remember that browser at least. No, it hasn't. Okay. So I'll just put these all back to where they were, calc, reload the package, okay, so what else have we got here, yeah we've done all the window managers, it's just really the KDE and the small command line tools are install a few of them maybe and then some of the bigger applications so the first thing I've got with KDE frameworks is some additional utilities that can be quite useful so let's jump into there I'll put this in as KDE frameworks apps So there's no additional information. We can just start building these applications one by one. Oh, I'm getting new notifications now. So that's obviously been activated, that notification daemon. Uh, as I say, it's sometimes useful to reboot to enable uh, things like that. That might not work automatically. So let's expand Arc. So this is like an archive manager, but the KDE version. So that paste in there, yeah. And I would expect most of these installation instructions to be fairly similar. Uh, KDE and Plasma seem to be reasonably consistent. Okay, and install. So that's arc done. Uh, I oh, think we can go on. Yeah, none of these have been installed, so I can just move on each time. So let's have a go at arc. Um, what is that going to be? System tools, maybe. Accessories, there it is. So it's similar to. Um, from archive, 
It's similar to what we've already seen. Um, all right, you have to specify what you're looking for, dear. And you can't set it to a generic. Uh, that's not particularly wonderful. Okay, so as you can see, there's the Falcon profile that I transferred. And you can see it's opened that archive up okay. Uh, generally, when you're um, using this arc, you just click on an archive in the um, browser, in the file browser, and it will just automatically open it. And you normally use it like that rather than opening a specific file. It tends to be the easy way to use it. So KDN Live, this is a video editor, needs MLT and it doesn't need anything else, so let's download this. So let's build it. Okay, we can test it, but I don't know of any MP4 files on the system. Um, I guess we can try and find. MP4 Oh, GURP. I don't know what that does. Okay, there was a few there. Oh, well, there's some there by the looks of it. Example movie. So let's try that one. So we use that command. And that didn't work. No plugins found. So it's probably because it hasn't been installed yet. So let's try and install it first. Now let's retry that command. Yes, there you go. A simple movie by the looks of it. Don't look like I can fast forward that at all. So anyway, that appears to work fine. So that's MLT. So KDN Live. And there are many other applications. Um, available. And I think what they've done with BLFS book is they've picked out some choice ones. So let's extract this. Okay, so that's building.
So that's built. Let's install it and test it. So I imagine it's going to be under sound and video. There it is there. Missing modules. Okay, so maybe some extra things that need to be installed to make this fully functional that are not in the BLFS book, but that is the Cadian Live interface. So I won't go into that. It looks a bit too complicated. So I'll shut that down. Tidy up. Move on to KMix. So this is just a mixing application. Install and that's done. So we'll look at that. Uh, this might be under system tools, possibly. No. Well, I don't know where that is then. Right, I'll run it from the command prompt. So that's what you get. You can control the volume of the player, the back devices, capture devices, streams and capture streams and so on. And then you can see you can do a lot more with it. All right, that might be part of Plasma, actually. It does integrate well with Plasma. So that's, so this is another one that's not, aborted. I wonder if it puts something in the control panel here, like the GNOME app did. A bit strange otherwise. So that's KMix. KIO Extras. This is a really useful um, add-on. For well, I thought it was for KD actually, more for um, I can add on to Dolphin to allow, or in fact it's more than Dolphin, it's anything KDE allow you to connect to various different uh, protocols um, as if they were local. So we need to install this first of all. So build that. And install. So that sounds done. So shut that down. And then we'll build KIO AIO extras.
okay it's built let's install it yeah, I don't think yeah there's it is just the library so I can't demonstrate anything with that one but certainly within KDE it's a very useful thing to have K help center again this is more for KDE but I think this would probably work externally so grant Lee Build and install. That's done. that down and we'll download K help center build it and install it. So let's do sudo csu. And that's done. Um, looks like it's got a standalone program. Yep, so you can see there's some manuals there which you can double click to bring up. Uh, document not found so it's probably because plasma hasn't been installed yet um, but there's some stuff there so there are all the protocols that KIO supports so, so it's quite quite useful so that's that console so this is the KDE or plasma terminal really powerful terminal uh, so let's download that and a patch In non plasma environments, the console scroll bar and its handle do not show up well if desired. Apply the optional patch. The patch makes the scroll bar light grey with a small white border. Okay, so I'll put this in because I find it quite annoying the uh, minimalist look that we've got these days with no frames and no scroll bars and hidden scroll bars and minimal scroll bars. It's quite difficult to see the windows sometimes or the boundaries and things. So We've put that patch in. Let's build the console. Okay, that's done and install it and we can look for it in system tools I imagine yep there it is and you can see it looks pretty much like any other console but it's it, like I say it's quite powerful you can configure quite a lot about it um, So 
So I'm not going to go into that. Like I said, I normally use this, but as I've got this LX terminal set up, I'll uh, just carry on using that now it's configured rather than mess around configuring that. So that's console. Next we've got libkexiv. So it sounds like it's just the library, yeah. And I presume it might be something to do with the next package ocular, which is like a PDF viewer. So build it and install. It's done. So next we've got Ocular. And the optional dependencies are installed. Remove the associated reference in the skip optional environment variable. So libspector chm libzip. DJ view Libra EPUB. Pocket discount. Okay, I can't see the libzip anywhere actually, but I'll leave it in. So I'll just copy and paste. As that is. Okay, it's built, so let's install and that's done. Uh, so let's have a quick look at that one. Uh, imagine under office, is it? Yep, yeah. so it's just a PDF viewer. So let's go to Computer, file system, user, share, uh, what documents do we have? I can't remember now. That's text. Sam has got anything. Oh, no one might have is HTTP. Maybe not. Um, cups, was it that one? No.
Right, let's look for one. Find user share. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. Was that one? IPP tool share, so it was in cups. IPP tool, oh yeah, document 84, could not open, oh yes, that's right, these were funny things, weren't they, test file, let's try that one, no, don't know what's funny about them, um, Swig don't give documentation, let's try that one, so Swig, Manual. That's strange. I can't see that. There's what you just share. Sw oh, swig. The two swigs there. User share. Oh, doc. Right. Okay. Oh, this is maybe where I should have gone. Yeah, this would have been better. So, swig. That's better. Manual. Swig documentation. Yep, yeah, there you go. So, yeah, it looks like a proper manual. It does. So, that's that. Um, so we've done that, let's move on to libkdc raw. So again, this is a library probably for Gwen view, which is a, a viewer. So let's download that. So install it and tidy up. Yeah, KDC raw and move on to Gwenview. Uh, oh, we've got one dependency here. K image annotation needs color picker. K color picker. So it's K capital C color picker. Build and install. So K image annotator. Can build and install.
Okay, that's done. So now I can build Gwen View. Oh, I didn't add that to the list. So it's that one done and Gwen View. Okay, install that, and now we've got a KDE, KDE based file, uh, yeah, image viewer. So let's have a go at that one. Um, so, where's this going to be? Graphics, Gwen View. Um, So let's go to, oh, I don't know why that wants to connect all the time, home, let's put the root in there, user, share, uh, cups, looks like there's some images there somewhere. Oh, it's a calibration image. Well, you can see there's an image there anyway. So that's that. Um, so now we move on to libkcddb. Needs lib music brains. So let's download that and a patch. So put the patch in first and got no other options. So we'll just copy and paste this. And install. So that was the music brains. Now we've got libkcddb. So again, copy and paste. Store. Now we can move on to K3B, which is the KDE version of the Brazero CD writer for GNOME. So there's another Lib Music Brains here, a different version. So let's download that. And save a patch. Version two, this is. So 
So it looks like it's a Python package, is it? Oh, now we can build bindings. That's what it is. So now we can build the package. Uh, sorry, install the package. And now we can run the tests. That's OK. And install the bindings with this command. Right, so do one CSU and that's done. So now we can build K3B. Right, Mr. Package again, KCCDB. It's that one. So build Okay, that's built, so now we can install and that should be done. So let's try running that. Um, some video, yep, there it is. And this one's actually warned us that it hasn't found an optical drive, but you can actually still use it to create ISO images. So similar to the one before you can just drag and drop and so on so that's that we want to further kde5 packages uh, did i do k3b for that yes i did so as it says here the full list of packages are here um it tells you how to build them some do need extra dependencies so let's have a look see if there's anything that i recognize that might be useful just an example to install. Um, well, Falcon we've already done, but that's in the book anyway. Oh, file light's quite useful actually. It's a bit like that disk usage program we saw for um, GNOME. So let's try and build this one. See how we go with this. So let's extract it. So it says CMake with these options to determine what dependencies are needed. T 
testing source is not supported. Or build testing equals off. Right, that's already in the options. So that's all right. Um, I don't know if it actually explicitly says something's missing or if this is just everything that is found that it needs. Doesn't seem to be anything that stands out. So let's just try and build this. Right, so it did. have not been found so I need something called Kirigami and quick charts although they're runtime dependencies it looks like it hasn't completed no so it looks like we might need to fetch those two so I'll tidy this up so Kirigami and quick charts so they hopefully will be in here. Yeah, there's Kirigami Gallery. I wonder if that's the same thing. So let's save that. And the other one's quick charts. OPQ. No, there's nothing there with that name. Right, let's try the quick charts and then try to rebuild it in case that's part of Kirigami possibly. So let's once again put this in. Uh, let's copy this and paste. Right, so that's built. Install that. Now let's try file light again. So paste that in again. Okay, yeah, it seems to works then so either it's happy that kirigami is enough or the, or that other location that other package was part of kirigami so let's make install again and we should have file light installed now uh, system tools probably no there it is there file light so let's scan the root folder and you can see it works a lot quicker than the GNOME one by the looks of it. But it's a similar thing, you can see the source is 14 gig, user 23 and ops 11.9. So and you can go into each one and so on. So, so yeah, that's an example of building one of the optional uh, KDE Plasma or KDE Framework applications that's not in the book. So what I'm going to do now is move straight on to KDE Plasma. So this, all we've done at the moment is installed some more bits of the framework, which are like applications and so on. It's not the actual desktop environment, which is what Plasma 5 is now. So let's do that. Uh, no additional configuration is needed because it uses the same configuration as KDE Framework 5 uses. So building Plasma 5, it's got the location there. We've got two dependencies. This was a one I was going to install anyway as um, a tool that's useful to have on the command line to monitor disk status. But let's start with this libqcalculate. 
So let's let me just put in the fact that I've added in uh Kiri Gami Gallery. And file light. So now we're doing libq calculate. So let's put that in there. Download it. Libq. Lib calculate. That's the correct way of saying it, the looks of it. So configure and make. Okay, let's run some tests. That's all okay, so let's install the package. So that's done. Loop calculate and next we need this smart mon tools so let's download that okay let's do it in a separate tab Smart Mon Tools. Um, so we just copy this as it is. And install. So that's that package uh, looks like this has gone wobbly again. So, oh, this Xorg Synaptix driver. Oh, yeah, that's an input driver. So, um, that should be straightforward to install. I'm not going to install it myself because I haven't got a touchpad, uh, but that should be straightforward. Um, Qt Web Engine is required for Aura browser. Okay, so again, this is one of these packages that's built in bulk. So let's, oh, what does it say about the commented out packages? Are all for customer support Plymouth, which is designed to be run with an initial RAM disk during boot. Plasma SDK pack, package is optional, used for software development. 
Plasma Nano package is used for embedded systems and Plasma Mobile provides phone functionality. The Aura browser package requires QT Web Engine. Discover package requires an external package app stream. And the Plasma Welcome package requires the external package K accounts integration. So that looks like that's that place where we were just now downloading file like from. So it looks like they've commented out sensible packages so it looks like it's probably about two thirds or just a little bit more that we um, installed things like the SDK are probably no use to most people unless you're actually developing on Plasma so let's now fetch all the files I'm going to put these in a separate directory so I'll call it Plasma 5 CD Plasma 5 and download those packages. Okay, so that looks like that's finished downloading. So let's now copy the steering file that we've got here. So that doesn't look like that's copied correctly for some reason. Let's right click and copy, and paste, and then I'll view that with Vi. And yes, so it looks like that's complete, so that's all good. So they've got this as root function again to allow the installation from a an ordinary user, irrespective of whether you've got sudo or not. Start a new shell that will quit on error and we'll use this script to build and install Plasma 5. For some reason the copy and paste is not working very well at the moment. So just wait for that to finish building now.
Well, that's built plasma five in 17 minutes. So we just got to look at this to see if you did not set KF to user. Create sim links. So I don't think we use that. We've set it into opt if I remember rightly. That's not copied again. I'm not sure if it's because we've been installing more libraries, copy and paste, or the highlighting's not working correctly. So yeah, we did not set it into users, so we've got to put these in. It's using the as root function, so we can just copy and paste this without having to do SU or anything. Uh, useless system D units have been installed. So let's do, well, in fact, we could do the as root, I imagine, to do this. Let's put a V in there, we can see them actually being deleted. Yep, there you go. Linux PAM, if you built Plasma with the recommended LAM, uh, Linux PAM support, create the necessary configuration file. So let's become root now. So we've got a few settings here. Starting Plasma 5, you can start Plasma 5 from run level 3 using X init. Um, and to do that, you've got to create this command line to start it correctly. And again, this X session errors uh, for debugging. So, as you've seen, we've start, we're starting with a um, uh, display manager. So, let's quit out of this um, let's put plasma 5 into this spreadsheet for the record oops that was wrong uh, let's copy it now copy and paste paste it in there so we don't get the formatting. So I'll save that, close that, I'll shut that tab down, shut the browser down, we'll log out. And we'll change the desktop to Plasma. Let's try, well, let's try the X11 first. And yes, there it is loading. So, and quite kindly, it's put a couple of uh, tools down here in the system tray. So, um, let's get Falcon up. Yep, that's working. Now that's not going to fit in the window because the taskbar is a bit fatter than the previous one. Let's get... Uh, LX terminal up. Put that there. And I'll pin that. And also under office, get the calc up and I'll pin that as well. And what I'll do is I'll carry on doing the remaining build in KDE. So that's that. So that's all the main window managers and packages installed. So I think what I'm going to do is just pick out a few command line utilities that are useful to have. Um, I'm not going to install all of them, but I'll just pick out some. Uh, let's go right to the top. And as you can see, we've installed nearly all of the BLFS book. There's not a lot left. So I'll just look through and see if there's anything that takes my fancy. So the first thing I'll do is reinstall Vim, see if that fixes that. Uh, 
funny character would get up. So let's download it. And so if you recompile Vim, your X libraries are not the repetition. Okay, so that shouldn't be a problem. If you intend to run the test, I've not installed Xorg append. So we have got Xorg in users, so we don't need to bother with that. So let's change to sources BLFS. Yeah, the font looks clearer again. So uh, there's obviously something about LXQT where the rendering is maybe a little bit flaky. Uh, but otherwise, let's extract Vim. And see if there's any other options. There might be some. So let's do these two lines first. Then copy the configure command. And check what we've got here. Okay, we're never going to know. Right, so might looks like we need to all options can accept dynamic. All the numbers we can accept equals dynamic. This is required for Python 3, so let's enable these because we've got all these libraries. Just some extra functionality that even if we don't use it, I guess we're testing the build. So let's try that. And build. Right, it says when testing that some tests may complain about being unable to find the corresponding directory and wait for the user input. If this is the case, this file should be saved and removed for running tests. So let's try. Um, even if one of the test files produces the file test out in the source tester, the remaining test will still be executed or all as well. The log report all done. Some test labels flaky may fail location can be ignored. The test not to fail if the output is redirected to a file and also if they're running a screen session. So we're not in a screen session. We're not going to redirect to a file. We're in a next term terminal emulator or that sort of type. So we should be okay to run this.
Okay, so that's finished. Um, got one fail test, it might be the one where it hung. Um, and also, unfortunately, I saw that the screen blanked, so uh, hopefully I've changed the settings to stop that happening again. Um, so it says that if all goes well, the log will report it done. I think one test out of nearly 6,000 is okay. Um, let's install it and also it does say that some tests expect to be next term as well so not in next term but it's next term compatible I guess so let's install the package and why did that fail right, let's do sudo su and source profile and then make install see if that makes it that's better by default documentation is installed in vim so it looks like we need to reinstall this i presume we installed the documentation before in linux from scratch but this may be more complete Wish to update the runtime files. So let's run this. Okay, so that looks like that's done. We can install them. Jupyter tag. I so said that, that's probably stuff that's been there from the first installation. And that's done. We've still got this funny character here. So whether that's because I'm using UTF-8 character set or what it is, I've never seen it before. So it could be. And it's the first time I've actually installed Linux from scratch or beyond Linux from scratch with UTF-8 set, so it could be what it's to do with. So that's Vim installed. Um, I'm going to see if VimTutor.bat No, it's still there, so I, I, that's what I, all I can assume that it is to do with that. That's a bit unfortunate. Um, I guess I wonder if I could do lang equals en underscore gb dot iso no it's still there so I can't explain that Vim's been reinstalled um, I presume it must be one of the libraries that Vim's using could be that that library has been installed under UTF-8 possibly um, so that that would normally tell me to go and reinstall certain libraries that Vim might be using to see if that fixes it. But um, in this case, I'm going to ignore it. So I'm going to look through to see if there's any other applications that might sound interesting to install. Um, yeah, screen could be interesting for multiplexing screens. If you log off DOS to Unix for, I think it's converting text files. Uh, let's have a go at using screen, uh, building screen. Yeah, that was simple enough. So 
So let's tidy this one up. Screen dash. So the settings look like they're okay to use, nothing to change. So I'll copy and paste. And install. And that's all it is. Uh, what else does it say to do? Nothing else to configure. And basically this is useful if you do screen. I use minus H999 for uh, ensuring the history is restored. What you do, you get a new terminal. You can use this um, as you wish. For example, I could leave top running there. And you do control A D and it'll detach that screen. As you can see it says detached at the top there. And if you do screen minus L I think it is it oh no, that's started it up. Screen minus minus help. Uh oh yeah, screen minus ls, that's it. Screen minus ls. It'll list the screens that are attached. So that top program is still running in a session on this screen so that's the PID and this is like a, uh, a file that is created to identify that, that um, screen session still running I can do the same command again and start another session going for example I could list everything on the route terminate that so that's still running in the background if I do screen minus R because that's on well, it's clear screen minus R because that's ambiguous it doesn't know which terminal session I want to resume so if I do the first one just type the number in you can see that's still running and if I do screen minus R again and resume the first one you can see that's actually gone through and listed all the files on the file system and it's been running in the background. Um, so you can see you can run several sessions in parallel just via one terminal. And I could log off and, and you know, obviously you've got to leave the machine on, but I could be doing something completely different um, and it would still be running. So it's good for accessing machines remotely. So if I terminate these just to control D as if you're logging out it says it's terminating screen minus R will automatically pick up the remaining one session I know it won't you have to specify it in this case there's no screen to resume machine 1118 oh that's interesting oh it's attached that's why so I need to log out of that screen minus R that will resume or is that Oh no, that's cleared it down because that was the last one. That's right. So, so that's pretty useful to have. Um, what else? We've got HD Palm can be quite useful. Let's install that one. As it says, it can be quite dangerous to use if you're not careful. I use this mainly to erase discs, um, either SSDs or spinning discs. Um, if the disk has got a security erase feature on it, then it's sometimes easier to use than just writing zeros to the drive. And of course, with a SSD, you don't want to be writing zeros to the drive because you'll just be wearing it out sooner. So let's... Oh, did I shut that down by accident? Let's install this, put that in there, right, I've yeah, extracted it, 
So this is simple to do. Make right. That's my mouse moving around again, and install it. Uh, I'll have to do sudo minus e. That's it, nice and quick. And what you can do with it, you can do HD palm on its own. Uh, sorry, minus L. Oh yes, that's another thing. Generally, it's not allowed to be run by a normal user, so you have to run it as root. And yeah, on its own, it will give you a summary of all the commands. Uh, like I say, I use the security, so you can security settings, security help, I think it is. Yeah, and it gives you all the switches for security help. So you can erase disks, as I say. And there's other things on there. Um, I find some machines, the default set to, uh, for mechanical disks, is set it to a quiet, um, a quiet setting. But sometimes you might want performance. So there's a setting somewhere here. If I can find it. That one there to get and set acoustic management. So generally they're set to 128. Um, you can set it to 254. It's maybe noisier, but it will be running at full speed, so that could be quite useful. Uh, the two eyes give information about the drives. The uppercase and lowercase give different amounts of information. The two T's are quite good for getting quick performance uh, indication of the disk. So if I use them, you can both use them both together. So that will just do some reads, both buffered and cached reads, and just give you a synthetic uh, performance rating on the disk. So that can be pretty useful sometimes. So that's HD Palm. Um, what else can we use here? MC Midnight Commander, a bit like the old Norton Commander. Uh, I don't usually use it myself. I have used it, but it's not something I use a great deal. Um, what else can we do here? Oh, NFS Utils. Now, all this... No, sorry, not NFS Utils. I do use that, actually, but I won't be bothering to set that up because it means I need a... Um, a server as well as a client to, to demonstrate it properly. Uh, NTP is the one I want to do. All the time that I've been building this, the clock's been wrong. It's been a, an hour ahead of the time. So I've deliberately not changed the time so that I could reset it using NTP. So what I shall do is shall, I'll actually install that last because I'm worried that if I, the time's actually an hour earlier and I'm worried that if I start building other packages when the clock's gone back, it might affect the packages installed if they see files that uh, an hour later than actually has occurred, um, if that makes sense. So in theory, if a file's just been created, there shouldn't be anything created that's newer than it. And that could happen because the, the, uh, the NTP will put the clock back. So I'll just get that tab up to remind me that I want to install that. Uh, let's see if there's any other... Um, no, there isn't really. So it's just really the bigger applications. Um, oh, SDDM I was going to install. Um, let's have a look to see how complicated that is. It shouldn't be too complicated. No, it looks like it should be able to do that. Okay, so I'll get that one up to do as well. Uh, where's it gone to? There it is. SDDM. Yeah, so really it's just the big packages I'll, I'll finish up with. Um, I could go through some, well, I could go through all the little command line packages, but it's probably not really worth it that much. Um, 
I guess I'll just go through these. There's, yeah, there's some other X-based programs here. I'll do Thunderbird. I might do Transmission. It could be handy for BitTorrents, uh, which is useful for downloading ISOs, like the Linux ISOs and so on. Um, GPod head I might do as well. That's quite a useful tool to have. So um, let's start with SDDM, I think. Let's fetch that. It's more associated with KDE. It's nothing to do with KDE. It's just that, as you can see, it's written in QT, which is what the connection is between it and KDE, or well, the common thing about it. So let's extract SDDM and change into it. Become root, because we need to... Create an, a group and a user for SDDM, and then we'll copy the temporary directory and we'll copy the CMake command and just check if there's any other options, which probably won't be. No, so let's just build that as it is, or configure it as it is, and run make to build. So that's done. Let's um, become the root and install it. And tidy up uh, configuring we need to look at don't we normally you want to edit this file if for example if xorg is installed in ops use your preferred editor or is the root user right so we haven't got xorg in ops so we won't do that for security reasons, you normally want the default server arguments equals no listen unless a remote machine needs access to local server. So let's tidy up SDDM, become the root again, and put that setting in. Uh, yeah, if you've got a laptop, especially. You normally want the number lock key off um, with a full size keyboard. You probably don't. You probably want the number lock key on. And by default, virtual keyboard is presented for the user. If this is not desired, run as root. So we'll see what that looks like. And then we've got a boot script. So let's go into BLFS boot scripts and install that. And I presume that's, yes, that's done the change for us in this sysconfig, but it looks like let's just edit that so I won't have to change that manually. Yep, so it's overridden. Get rid of this horrible thing here. You can see it's overridden the light DM we were using, um, which is now commented out. It's in the um, highlighted blue and SDDM will be the display manager that will execute at boot time. So we've got some PAM configuration files, so we need to put those in. And we won't start SDDM because that could trash the desktop at the moment that's running. And again, there's that modification for the init tab and some themes you can install there as well. Um, there's also settings for setting the keyboard, but I've never had much luck with that. It defaults the American keyboard, and when I've ever tried to configure it, both in Gen 2 and Linux and Scratch, I've never had much um, 
much much of a result with that getting it to work properly um, I've never known quite what it is so um, well maybe I'll have a look at it see if I can find something but uh, probably won't it probably won't work so I think the thing to do now is to quit this save this oh, uh, save that shut that down I'll shut the browser down in fact, KD will remember Windows settings. Come to think of it, um, so let's let's actually try that to see how well it will remember. Has it remembered the position of the terminal for some reason? It does remember the position of console. Um, I didn't save the calc. Didn't pin that, did I? Oh, yeah, I did. I wonder why it didn't appear. <coughs> Right, so I'll log out of this. Uh, log out. And I'll restart. And hopefully we'll get SDDM come up at the reboot. Oh, right, okay, that's the keyboard. Yeah, that's annoying. That's right in the way. Right, so I'll just press enter there to get rid of that. So, oh, right, so somehow, I don't know how, it's automatically detected the right keyboard. So whether that's something that um, has been configured in the Linux from scratch, but beyond the Linux from scratch book, whether it's now a default from SDDM that it looks to see what the locale setting is, I don't know, but uh, clearly that's been an issue maybe, and it now looks like it's working automatically. However it's working, I'm glad it's working. So, oh, what did I do there? Oh, that's it. That's right. I'm going to get rid of that keyboard because that was uh, rather annoying. So let's do that setting it mentioned here. I've never seen that keyboard. So that's why I was interested in seeing what it looked like. So let's get rid of that. And as you can see, the terminal and the browser have started up automatically. I'm not sure why the... Um, LibreOffice Calc hasn't started up, even though it reckons it's and and it's crashed out as well. So it's not really reliable to leave that running. It does say it's pinned, so I'm not sure why that's not working. That, that presumably is something to do with Office, as that's the only. Okay, let's open another window, as that's the only. Um, Thing that's not loading correctly so right I'll shut that down now come out of the roots and what I'm going to do is go back to the login screen and just check that that keyboard has actually disappeared yeah it hasn't come up now right so we'll load up Calc manually. And I'll now do NTP. And that'll be it for this session, I think. So we've got no extra dependencies. Let's download the tarball. and build uh, my 
was thinking of NTP. So once again, we need a separate user and group. So we need to become root and put the group and the user in. The update leap command needs to be fixed in order to run properly. And then fix an issue introduced with glibc2. And then configure the following commands. Let's see if there's anything to modify with that. No, we'll just accept it as it is. and compile it. So I'll run some tests and we can become user when the, the root user when they're finished or passed. Install it and then configure. Now it's got a configuration file here with different servers. Um, what does it say here? <laughs> right, so it looks like we can just copy and paste this in. And these are servers around the world. So put that in, but I'm going to modify it because I've got my own time server, which I use for my network, and I'm going to remove all of these, or not remove them, just comment them out, so they're not used, and I'll just put in my local server, which is... 192.168.08 so if you put that in it won't work so don't copy exactly what I've done um, unless you've got your own time server of course in which case you can put your own IP address in um, you can put in an actual fully qualified domain name there but I prefer to put an IP address in just so that if the name server which I've also run locally as well goes down that you'll still get the time updates um, you may wish to add a security se session so let's do that as well so that should have appended that to that file that we just created synchronizing time we need to add this to the startup scripts so go back into BLFS boot scripts Put that in and then if you prefer to run ntpd periodically add the following command to roots cron tab and then execute the following command if you'd like to set the hardware clock to the current system time and shut down and reboot so that might be a good idea to do um yeah they haven't got that as a, an option or a preferred option because it's not in bold it's just telling you that it is something you could do. They've not provided a cron script, so it looks like the BLFS preferred way of doing it is to set the clock at the start up and shut down. So let's put these two lines in and that should be enough. Um, so at the moment, well, you can see in the bottom right, the time is 20 to seven, which is an hour later than it really is. Let's tidy this up. So what I'm going to do is to run this and I presume this should update the time automatically. So 
set the system right so because it's out so far it's telling me to set the system clock by hand so I'm going to right click this adjust date and time put the time back by one hour so now that's now more or less the correct time it's a few seconds out password for root that's been set now so now I'll rerun this command and it should set it accurately and then obviously it will be setting the time accurately each boot up and shut down so as you can see it's not changed the time but it did adjust it by 10 seconds which is about right it was out by about 10 seconds so that's all installed correctly so I'll save this file shut this down and I'll carry on with some of the high level packages in the next session